In mixed martial arts, the UFC has been the most well-known and dominant brand since the sport's founding. The organization's president, Dana White, along with his associates, has significant authority as the world's top promotion. Undoubtedly, Dana White and his team deserve a great deal of credit for popularizing the UFC, but they have occasionally treated some of its fighters with a little too much disrespect. Without further ado, let's look at eight fighters who UFC and Dana White disrespected, listed in no particular order. Number 8. Stike Myasic Relations between Francis Ngannou and the UFC haven't always been bad. In truth, the first time the Predator was scheduled to challenge Stike Myasic at UFC 220, much of the promotion was centered around the knockout artist out of Cameroon. Though Myasic was a dominant champion on the verge of breaking the record for most heavyweight title defenses, the UFC didn't seem eager to promote the Ohio native, seemingly favoring a challenger. You feel like you've gotten your fair, fair shake in this whole thing? Ah. Uh. No, because uh, he's getting he's getting much more promotion. He, they are hyping him more than they're hyping you, Stipe. Good for him. I mean, you know, good. No, let, let them hype him up. I don't care. I'm used to it. I've been doing this for a long time, and I don't mind not getting the hype. While it certainly seemed like the UFC was hoping for the title to change hands, the baddest firefighter on the planet managed to retain it. Feeling disrespected by the buildup to the bout, the champion opted to have his coach put the belt around his waist rather than Dana White, who was left standing awkwardly in the cage. One thing that a lot of people noticed was that you took the title from Dana and you handed it to the coach and mm -hmm. had him wrap it around your waist. Can you explain the thought process there? My dude. That dude respects me, I respect him. End of story. Number seven, Chris Cyborg. In many cases, Dana White and the USC are subtle with their disrespect. However, that wasn't the case when dealing with Chris Cyborg. For years, the promotion avoided adding Cyborg to their roster, even though she was arguably the best female fighter in the world for a time. To make matters worse, White publicly insulted the Brazilian by referring to her as Vanderlei Silva in a dress and heels. When Cyborg finally made her way to the USC, her relationship with the organization was understandably strained. To be fair, Chris Cyborg wasn't totally on the up-and-up in her dealings with White either. Just before she departed from the UFC, she released a doctored video misquoting White to portray him in a negative light. The video prompted Dana White to declare that he was out of the cyborg business, referring to the termination of her contract. Number 6. Demetrius Johnson Though he is one of the most dominant champions of all time, the UFC never seemed to get behind Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Moreover, White and his associates haven't historically been keen on promoting the flyweight division as a whole. Of course, both Johnson and the division were disrespected in an incident involving a potential bout with former bantamweight champion TJ Dillashaw. The fight was considered in place of an already scheduled contest with Ray Borg. According to Johnson, matchmaker Mick Maynard told him that he would shut down the flyweight division if he wouldn't accept the fight with Dillashaw. Still, the contest never happened, yet the division rolled on. Finally, after losing a split decision to Henry Cejudo in 2018, Mighty Mouse and the UFC's relationship ended when he was traded to 1FC for Ben Askren. Number 5. Tony Ferguson Tony Ferguson is a man who has never gotten much love from the UFC. At UFC 216, riding a 9-fight winning streak, the Ultimate Fighter 13 winner defeated Kevin Lee for the interim lightweight title. However, following a freak knee injury, Ferguson was forced to pull out of one of his many scheduled fights with Khabib Nurmagomedov at UFC 223. As a result, despite only being sidelined for about five months, Ferguson was stripped of the title. To put that in comparison, Conor McGregor held on to the lightweight title for 15 months before finally being stripped due to inactivity. After recovering, he won two more bouts, compiling a remarkable 12-fight winning streak in one of the sport's toughest divisions. Still, Tony Ferguson has never competed for the undisputed title. Now 38 amid a three-fight losing streak, Ferguson seems destined to go down as perhaps the best UFC fighter to never compete for an undisputed title. Number 4. Colby Covington Some media members were critical of the UFC's decision to give Colby Covington a second shot at Kamaru Usman and the welterweight title after just one win between the bouts. While one could understandably cite the decision as an example of the UFC showing favoritism to the polarizing welterweight, there is evidence to suggest Dana White and the gang aren't as big of a fan as people might think. To illustrate the previous point, look no further than Covington's reign as an welterweight champion. In 2018, Covington picked up a big win over Rafael Dos Anjos to capture the interim title. However, despite his standing, the organization snubbed chaos by giving British star Darren Till the next shot at the undisputed champion after Colby Covington asked for a bit of additional time to recover from nasal surgery. Furthermore, 
Covington was eventually stripped of without getting a shot at then welterweight champion Tyrone Woodley. While his standing with the organization may have improved over time, Colby Covington hasn't always been one of the UFC's favorites. Number 3. Mark Hunt While UFC has seemingly disrespected several fighters, few have ever tried to do anything about it. One man who felt wrong and tried to push back was the Super Simone Mark Hunt. At UFC 200, Hunt took on Brock Lesnar and was soundly beaten by the current WWE superstar. Of course, the result was later changed to a no contest when Lesnar failed both the pre- and post-fight drug tests. Furious about the infraction, Hunt attempted to sue both the UFC and Lesnar, claiming they conspired to create an unfair competitive environment, along with several other claims. Hunt also believed that Dana White was aware that Brock Lesnar was using a performance-enhancing substance and allowed the fight to go on anyway. Unfortunately, Hunt's legal team couldn't make any of these charges stick, and the Super Simone was ordered to cover the USC's efforts. Number 2. Randy Kutcher As a six-time world champion, Randy the Natural Kutcher is without question one of the USC's all-time greats. Still, despite his many accomplishments with the organization, the Hall of Famer is seldom mentioned or celebrated by Dana White and company. Even during his time in the USC, Kutcher's relationship with management was rocky. In the late 2000s, The Natural and the USC were involved in a high-profile contract dispute. Things were eventually resolved and Kutcher resumed his career in the Octagon. However, when he finally retired for good, he decided to sign with Belader to serve as a coach on the reality series, Fight Masters. The move infuriated White, who quite literally said he didn't respect Kutcher at all when discussing him during a 2013 interview. The USC president took things even further by bearing Randy Kutcher from cornering his son Ryan during his Octagon debut. Almost a decade later, Kutcher and White's relationship still remains strained. Number 1. Khabib Nurmagomedov Khabib the Eagle Nurmagomedov is one of the best fighters in MMA history. Though he's a legendary figure these days, the UFC didn't always give him the red carpet treatment. After compiling a perfect 23-0 record and going on a remarkable run in the UFC that included seven straight victories, Khabib was promised a title shot against reigning lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez. However, the promotion decided to go back on their word and give the shot to Conor McGregor at UFC 205. I signed so contract using... and I see in media, like, Conor gonna fight with uh, Alvarez and I, I was like, hey, I supposed to fight with him, I signed already the contract. I tell him, hey, you know already I, I deserve this, I have to fight for the title and after this fight you have to send me a real contract, this is not like fake, like you do last time. The Irishman would go on to capture the title that evening, while the Eagle wound up fighting Michael Johnson in the prelims instead. The UFC's slight would set the stage for the eventual rivalry between Conor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.